in today's session we'll be talking about the fluid dynamics implication of fluid dynamics but more about uh, you know the pre processing part why it is important and the background of cfd how it is related what is the role of uh, you know the pre processing why it is important so we'll start it with the the table of content what we are going to see uh, overview uh, so first we'll have a quick background of cfd what exactly it is uh and what it is about then the role of uh, cfd in the virtual simulation because whatever we are doing it's a form of the computational simulation it's a form of virtual simulation so why do we need that first of all uh if it is a tool uh what is the requirement of that tool then the workflow uh which is uh, uh which is a kind of uh, you know how we take a problem uh, which is in reality exist and how we convert that into a computational simulation and a little bit about a phase theory uh then at the important part which is uh, uh you know the focus for the today's session pre processing uh so we will not go into the deep of what exactly pre processing is but we will see why it is important what are the important factors uh, which affects it's not just about meshing pre processing is much more than just meshing meshing happens you know when you click on a tool and it just happens in 2 second or maybe uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes but uh, what is the important thing of the pre processing uh, step and then we will take some of the example one internal example internal flow example and one external flow example uh, not in detail but yes uh, what are the things or when the mesh is generated what are the things we need to consider before or after and then a little bit of Uh, the tool uh, about ansa so here we are not going to uh, talk about what is you know the ansa what is the use but uh, why it is important and uh, what kind of advantage you get if you are using ansa uh, this is based on my experience uh, from the industry and from the tools so the same kind of theories can be explained with uh, you know the other terms also so we'll start the session with first the background so we know uh, the computational fluid dynamics is you know it, it's all about virtual simulation it's all computational part we have a tool with with which we you know uh, solve a lot of simulations excel neurodynamic internal flows but but what is the ultimate goal of cfd if we are using a tool which is very costly which is very you know uh, you need to have a master in that you need to understand a lot of facts and figures but what is the ultimate goal so since the cfd is you know involved into the motion of the fluid and it, its interaction with the a moving body or maybe a stationary body also so we judge these kind of interaction based on some parameters so what are those parameters uh, the dynamic system or any any uh, the system which has the fluid moving fluid so it will have uh, the fluid flow heat and mass transfer could be the combination of both so these three are the basic parameters which we are studying you know since our school also uh, these are the basic parameters there are other parameters also which uh, with which we can judge the flow but these are the three basic parameters with uh, on the basis of which we judge uh, you know the flow or we if we convert that into the technical we try to understand what is the flow physics based on these three parameters these are very important parameters and we have some you know set kind of rules we have some kind of protocols based on which these uh, you know the judgment should be hap- should uh, happen so what are those rules what are those different types of uh, you know the certain number of protocols so the first is governing equation the uh, governing equation some of the governing equation which defines the flow the flow physics and these flow uh, these equations or governing laws are based on some of the experiments some of the theories some of the assumptions so it's a combination of all uh, to get you know uh, and based on that we judge the result or we judge the physics now the cfd is uh, involved into the fluid the fluid could be anything which is you know the moving so the basic example could be the air you know near around us which we can feel but we cannot see we cannot judge so the part of tool where we use it to judge and understand something which we cannot see and also the predict what kind of you know if the interaction is happening what kind of results it could be what kind of uh, you know the flow patterns it could be what kind of end results it could be how it is affecting the other body how it is in interaction interacting the simple example could be you know the moving car 
on the road uh, we cannot see the air in, uh, around the car but we see you know the drags and the heat transfer the plume path uh, so all these things these are based on the certain number of laws or the protocols and these are the protocols uh, the banoli's equation uh, which is flow governing equation and then uh, we have a continuity equation the conservation of momentum which is basically a form of uh newton's law where we you know newton's second law where we consider all the body forces uh the shear forces and the gravitational forces of so the gravity we consider on the body and all this combination goes into the backbone of cfd which is navier stokes equation this is the equation which governs the flow this is the equation which defines the flow with the help of of course not just three equation there are many more equations but we can see these are the equations which are the backbone or the strong pillars of a uh, uh, you know the cfd and since cfd is based on uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, rules and regulations or we can say i can say uh, it's it has some kind of certain you know uh, the approximation so these governing equations we which we have seen since schooling uh, are basically in the form of algebraic equations which later on converted into uh you know the partial differential equations and then uh, the numerical approach to the uh simulations now why we are converting this algebraic form of equations into the partial differential equation because for a small problem we can solve by hands we can do the you know the small uh, calculations by hand but for a flow domain for a bigger domain for the complex uh problems we cannot do that and there is a possibility that you know the humans are tend to you know make errors if you are doing it for the long time you can make error uh, it's no guarantee that whether that solution by doing you know hand calculation would would be perfect or not so since these equation and these uh, governing laws are based on assumptions based on some certain you know, rules so of, of course we get what we get is the approximate solution so far cfd is not able to predict uh, the exact solution there are some methods but still we have some approximation based on uh, you know their uh, fundamental itself so cfd uh, is not capable of solving a real problem but it it gives you the idea of you know how it could be how it can be but that's not 100% true so next uh, we move on to the role of uh, you know the virtual simulation so basically uh, when you are developing a product what do you want uh, you want to you know uh, sold out your product sell out your product or you want to launch it without the testing no that's not possible because the product has certain number of application and certain number of limits so that involves time cost and manpower so for each and every development you need testing you need testing you need cost you need manpower say for example uh, it's it's very very basic example of an automobile when you are uh, you know you have certain number of protocols when you are launching it into the market for the crash for uh, uh, for the exhaust for you know uh, the norms are there so everything is involved everything involved uh, involvement has you know some time we will spend to the testing then you have a cost and then we have a manpower uh mindset and continuous change in requirement mindset is basically if say for example if a person who has 10 15 years of experience he will test a product he will he will think about the product as you know the success or uh, based on his experience he will say okay these flaws may become may uh, you know come uh, when the product is launched and the person who is you know at the very beginning of uh, the, uh, you know involved into the product alone he might not have that much of exposure and maybe there are continuous requirement uh, you know the changes okay uh, we did for the one month of development now the requirement is changing so person to person it also changes and sometimes it's pretty level also then uh, the flexibility and the you know the, the changes or the update in the process uh, say for example we did uh, some testing for a product for one month but we found that okay yeah, it is not going good in certain direction so we need to change but after change you have to test again uh some of the limitations of physical testing where you know you have a hazardous areas and the failure limits where the humans are uh it's it's not good to have uh, you know uh, the real testing or the physical testing of part it can be dangerous it can uh, you know cause the life and the quality 
to maintain the quality throughout the product so all these things all these things why we need you know the virtual simulation first of all because it's a virtual simulation your cost the real cost even if the product is not available in reality it is not available you can do the concept you can check uh, you know the testing you you can see you can certify everything from the computational one person can do that so you are saving a lot of time cost and manpower one person can do that and then you have a lot of flexibility when you are doing the computational simulation if you want to change it uh, you know some parameter you can change run the simulation overnight you will get the result but if the same thing if you want to do with the real product uh you might have to prepare a lot of things uh, like you know if the vehicle preparation if the vehicle is going for testing and you say no 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 we need to do some uh, you know other kind of test we need to change the part we need to test so those things will need time uh, and you know again the cost and manpower and the flexibility as as i said uh, any parameter at any step can be changed and we can directly see what are the effect Uh, and any hazardous situation you can do anything in the simulations uh, you know if it is failing i don't care i don't care if it is going into the red zone i am safe everyone is safe you know so so it we can check the limit of the product even if the product is actually not available and the quality standard this is a big factor uh, because uh, when a pers- uh, when uh, the product one person is uh, you know uh, when one person is uh uh when the one person is uh, checking something uh, so that time uh, the quality standard is different and when the other person is checking the quality standard is different so once you define the quality standard for all for all the uh, you know that for this product okay the quality standard should be throughout this process okay uh, it should be the same for all the product for all the thing so then it becomes and anyone can follow so this is the role of virtual simulation when actually we don't have a product but virtually the product is ready we can go for the launch or we can go for the real testing now the pre processing part or the workflow uh, not pre processing sorry the workflow what exactly is you know uh, the workflow so there are certain steps which are involved into the cfd simulation so we could say cfd process the first is you need to have an object a raw material you need to have a object uh, say for example in our language engineering language we could say a uh, geometry a uh, cad on which you, where you will work or the virtual model of your product which you are going to simulate or which you are going to judge or which you are going to uh, you know uh, go for the product development or you want to see how this product is going to behave so that becomes my raw material that becomes my raw material in the first step and then you need to have uh, you know the pre processing part which we will discuss in the later slide what are the uh, involvement once you have that you need to understand uh, what process shall i you know uh, take to uh, get the results what is my requirement say for example uh, you have a geometry you want a crash simulation or you want a cfd simulation or if you have a, a geometry if you want to do uh, the aerodynamics then do you want the flow physics uh, say for example you want to check how much heat dissipation is happening or you are just interested in you know what kind of flow is happening near the body or the underbody how it is behaving you are not interested much into what is happening near the body maybe outer you know the outer layers or how what is the effect of body in the moving so again the requirement and based on that we have some solver settings again i would say the protocols the set of rules which it will follow based on your requirement and then you have a analysis of result what we are you know going to see so let me why we have why i have given this as a piece of theory let me give a example which is little bit out uh, you know uh, very off road from the from the uh, cfd simulation for example you want a pizza everyone is aware of you know the pizza so uh if you go to the shop and you order a pizza and without telling what kind of pizza you want whether you want non veg veg you want what type of crust you want what type of uh you know the toppings you want uh, do you want jalapenos or not do you want capsicum do you want something so that's what goes into the raw material what do you want first of all what do you want what are you going to put into 
into the you know pizza what are the raw materials you're going to put into the pizza what are the things if you don't specify to the person who is taking your order he might just give you you know any kind of thing uh, you you go and say anything is fine for me so he will give you anything which you might not like then the cooking process you want uh, charcoal fry you want you know the grill tandoor whatever uh, that's the process where it is going to cook where it is going to you know the prepare what you're going to have and then the analysis of the result which basically you're going to eat so this is what is your requirement the analysis of result or i would say the physics what do you want to resolve now if you go back to this step first cfd is all about the flow physics solving the flow physics so if you have a wrong raw material if you are a vegetarian if you're going to order non veg pizza of course you are not going to like so that means what you are going to do is you are putting a wrong input into something which you won't like or you don't want so whatever you input you give whatever input you are going to give into the cfd based on that based on that and based on the solvent selection based on the process of what it's going to happen you will get the result cfd is just a tool cfd is not a magic uh it's a, it's it's a simple computational simulation whatever input you are going to give you are going to get the output based on that only so for wrong results or wrong simulation this you cannot blame the simulation in fact uh so that's the reason we need to understand the cfd basics or the pre processing part uh very much uh, you know into the depth each and every parameters what is the requirement and we need to take the consider of each and every parameter which is going to uh you know give the results as per requirement this is just basically i would say the 90% of uh, your uh, in the cfd simulation solver selection is basically uh, just kind of you know two clicks three clicks you need to understand that's it and results are you can you can't do anything whatever you have from the last two step, step you are going to get that so the pre processing part is the most important and the most basic thing which one has to understand when they are doing the cfd simulations